welcome everyone to the session by misut on testers qual guide to quality misut has joined us from tokyo he brings a rich experience to us in the quality assurance engineering domain he will share with us his story of bringing in quality in a project that had a huge room for improvement we are excited to hear that misut thanks yes for the kind introduction and let me share my screen and then we can start hello everyone again and i assume for most of the people it's still morning so uh, good morning and for me it's already afternoon as i told in the beginning i'm joining from japan and uh, i'm a quality assurance engineer and in the session we will a little bit talk about the uh, initiatives that we can perform in our activities to improve the quality the quality of the the quality of the product and the quality of the processes that we follow as well. So uh, as a starter, my name is Misut, uh, and I have uh, 13 years of experience in lots of different systems and domains, including robotic systems, uh, IoT platforms, uh, cloud systems, microservices architectures, and uh, both API and uh, UI. Uh, systems testing and nowadays mostly I'm doing test automation and trying to uh, execute our test cases uh, in the CI pipelines and which means we are doing the continuous testing and we are continuously trying to ensure the quality that the updates or the changes applied to the system or the behaviors do not break anything so we will talk about all the importance of all these kind of testing activities and test automation test execution and uh, all the other activities that we can improve uh, in our activities so uh, we are performing lots of different stages in the whole software testing life cycle we start uh, by the uh, analysis of the system under test First of all, we try to understand the requirements and then we design some test cases to cover these specifications with tests. And then we, of course, implement to be able to automatically execute them because now this test automation is very important, right? Without test automation, it would be really difficult. And we uh, had to allocate a lot of resources for the manual testing activities. It doesn't mean that we can all forget about manual testing because we will still need uh, the support from the manual testing. Uh, for the test automation. We will uh, analyze this uh, and discuss this. And the next thing after implementing test cases is executing them in any way, like in uh, manual ways or in automated ways. And eventually we have the maintenance stage, which is the continuous improvement and continuous maintenance. So we will go through all of them one by one and we will discuss what we can do, what we can further improve uh, in our activities. Let's start with the first one, which is the system under test, analyzing the system that we are testing and developing, because it is very important, right? If we do not know the system that we are testing very well, or even the users of the system, if we, are, if we don't know very well, then maybe we will have some coverage issues. We will miss some uh, things that the end users or the uh, clients, the customers are performing in their execution environments. For example, uh, which platforms they are using or which uh, devices they have in their environments. If we test only in certain execution environments with only certain data ranges, then maybe we will have, we will have some differences for the execution of scenarios between our test environment and the real production environments. So, Starting with the practices that we follow, nowadays we are mostly doing agile practices and which is very open for changes and updates. So we can have some change requests or some additional features or behaviors from the customers. If they need something else, if they are not satisfied with the current flows, they may request some additional changes, which is very welcome, which is quite okay for our workflows. But if we, do not keep our test cases up to date. I mean, if any behavior is already updated, but if we did not uh, update our assertions for the expected results, then maybe we will have some variances because uh, the behavior that we are testing is already expecting a different scenario, a different expected result, but we are still trying to cover the previous scenario. So keeping test cases up to date is very important. And in agile practice, we know that the uh, a working product, the working software is more important than the comprehensive documentation. Uh, 
But sometimes we misinterpret this. It doesn't mean that we don't need any documentation at all. Of course, we have uh, we need the basic understanding of the features, what kind of scenarios the users will have or what kind of expectations they need to see in their environments. For example, when you sometimes talk to different people in the project, they all have the basic understanding of the features, but some regarding some details, sometimes it is not clear, right? Some people say that, okay, maybe when you put a negative value, then maybe a pop-up window should appear. And some other people say that, okay, in the scenario, maybe we should totally ignore the requests. So these kind of details, if is not very well documented, we may have some misunderstandings and we may have some uh, bugs or vulnerabilities which may appear in the production environments. So what we can do as an improvement uh, action item is maybe we can sit together with the product owners, the product team or whatever, uh, who is responsible from these uh, products or the features. We can go through all the features and we can do a cleanup. If we have any obsolete features, we don't need them anymore, right? If uh, no one is using this in production environment, then why we are trying to maintain this? It will uh, raise some additional cost. We will try to execute test cases on these features which are not used at all. And we uh, try to update them according to the uh, dependencies and we it will raise some extra costs. So this is the first thing that we can do. We can clean up the obsolete features and regarding the uh, existent features, we can try to do a common understanding. We can try to build a common understanding. If there is any uh, unclear issues, unclear points, then we can discuss what should the expected behaviors uh, are and uh, we can document them in uh, any tools or any platforms that we are using to maintain or manage our specifications. The next thing that we can do is, uh, of course, encouraging the early QA uh, involvement. Because if we do not start our test preparations in the meantime that the design is started, then maybe we will be too late to execute our test cases, which means we will not be able to give early feedback. Because even starting from the analysis of the requirements, if we are already involved as the QA members, into the discussions, then we will already, maybe we would already give some feedback, right? Related to the, maybe the testability of the uh, the uh, requirements or even the, maybe the usability of the behaviors or the requirements. So we should already be involved in the discussions from the uh, requirement designs. And even the, uh, in terms of the development activities, whenever the features are developed, then we can already start our test executions. And if, we are, if they are failing in development stages, then maybe we will, already blocked, uh, we will already block deployment to the later stages, like the QA stage or the pro stage, because we already found out that there are some vulnerabilities in the development environment. So after the first stage, which is the uh, analysis of the system under test, then the next thing that we do is after understanding the system very well, then we design some test cases. And of course, designing the test cases properly is very important because if we do not cover the features very well, then maybe we will execute some test cases. We will design some test cases and we execute them. But if we do not cover the whole uh, use cases, the whole uh, scenario aspects, then we may have some issues in the later stages. And for this purpose, we can embrace lots of different test design techniques, not only certain design techniques, but also maybe sometimes we will do the equivalence partitioning to embrace different data ranges, not only positive values, sometimes the negative values as well, or uh, any different digits uh, and any different uh, amount of data that we will put as the uh, test data. Or maybe we will have the boundary value analysis to figure out the corner cases, like what are the maximum values or what are the minimum values supported by the system or the specification. And in addition to all this, of course, sometimes we will do the exploratory testing to uh, be so, to uh, create some more scenarios which were already defined. And of course, not only the testing, uh, techniques, but also some different verification and validation methods we can utilize, like maybe the review of the design or some simulation techniques, because sometimes we will need this, right? Because sometimes we will have some testability issues. Sometimes somehow 
for some reason, we will not be able to execute tests. So what we can do is maybe mathematically prove that the algorithm is in the uh, correct way or uh, which were already designed in an efficient way. We should do the review of design or sometimes if we have some hardware modules or if we have some hardware components, then if testing or automating is not possible, sometimes we need uh, the simulation support. We need the test harness. So we can utilize lots of different testing techniques, test design techniques to improve the coverage. Because if we have some coverage issues, then we may face uh, some uh, bugs or vulnerabilities, some improvement points stemming from these coverage gaps. And after we design tests, of course, again, documentation is important because in this way, we can build some traceable to matrices. What is a traceable to matrix? Like we can map the tests to the features and then we can understand which test case is uh, executing the scenario for which uh, feature or the requirement. Or the other way around, which feature is tested by uh, which test cases. We can understand by reviewing the uh, traceable matrix. And if we figure out that, if we reveal that, some features are not mapped with some test cases, which means they are not tested yet. So which means uh, we have some coverage issues over there. And why they are not mapped to some test cases? Maybe testable issues uh, is uh, one reason. So I wanted to emphasize this uh, specifically because I think this is very important. If we have some testability issues, for some reason, if we are not able to test or execute our test cases or even uh, design our test cases, then uh, it will uh, reduce the coverage. So what kind of testability issues we may have? For example, if I'm testing a subsystem in the whole system and if we are, I'm having some dependencies like Let's say whenever a new data is created, my subsystem should uh, automatically pull, uh, update itself uh, from the uh, dependent system, let's say, dependent subsystem, let's say, uh, which is uh, an external module to uh, my system under test. In that case, when a new data is created, my system should update itself, right? So how can I test this? First of all, I need to create a new test case to check if the update mechanism is working well. But if I don't have the full control on the other dependent system, like if I don't have right to create a data or even there is no public API or public interface, uh, API or UI, any interface to create data, then how can I simulate this scenario? I have to hit a certain scenario in which a new data is over there. But if I don't have right to create data, what will I do? I don't have any testability. So in this kind of uh, situations, what I can do is, of course, I can use some mock data, but it will not be the uh, same as the real usage. So in this kind of cases, what I can do is maybe I can communicate to the development teams and discuss them to wave some pay, uh, ways to improve the testability. Maybe sometimes I will request them for additional interfaces which will not be used in production. I already know that no one will use this additional uh, interface, but only for testing purposes, I can uh, perform these requests. So close communication with the other teams is very important in these terms. Like I will repeat myself a few times, but individual effort is not sufficient for a quality mindset. There should be a holistic approach. Everyone in the team should be on the same page and they should uh, all uh, concerned about quality. Because of course we have some uh, quality team teams or quality team members in the projects, but of course these people are not the only people responsible from the quality. Everyone is responsible from the quality. But why do we have some uh, quality members or the quality teams? Because sometimes we will perform as a quality coach as well. We are the people who maybe start these initiatives, but they should be performed all together with a, the with a collaboration with the other teams. So discussing with everyone, like the development teams and getting some support from product teams, development teams is very important. Otherwise we will not be maybe achieve our quality goals. So the next stage in the software testing lifecycle is implementation. And again, implementation is very important. If we are uh, automating our test cases, if we are developing our test codes in the correct way, then we will have some uh, outcome. But other way around, like 
if we are having some anti patterns and if we are some if we are having some quality issues then we may have some trouble what kind of quality issues we may have like there are lots of different aspects of quality not only the functionality but also the maintainability like whenever we have to update some test case what do we have to do like if we have some duplication Whenever I need to change something, I have to go lots of different places, right? This is uh, an example of duplication. Or if I have some uh, fragile test cases, of, or if I have some flakiness, like sometimes tests are uh, passing, sometimes failing. Uh, and uh, if I have some efficiency issues, like test executions are taking too much time. These kind of issues are also uh, some other aspects of the quality, like even the usability. Uh, maintainability and portability, compatibility. There are lots of abilities of uh, the quality. So we will go through them, uh, uh, at least a few of them, and discuss why they are important in terms of testing. Starting with the reliability. What does reliability mean? If I can rely on the test results, the reports coming from the test executions, because Let's uh, suppose, uh, let's uh, consider a few different situations. In one of them, if the feature is working well, if the feature is working as expected, my test case is failing, then it means it is not a real bug because the feature is working as expected, but my test case is failing. So it is a false alarm. So why is this a problem for me? Why is, is it a challenge? Because in this kind of situations, there is a failure, there's a notification. I am notified by the test automation uh, framework, and it says that there is a failing test. And then I have to understand the root cause. I have to figure out if this is a real a failure, real bug, or a false alarm. So it is an extra analysis effort. If it was passing, then I would not spend some time on this analysis uh, activity. But this way, uh, there is some extra cost in terms of time and resources. On the other way, uh, on the uh, other hand, if there is a, a feature which is not working well, there is a bug on the feature. But if my test case is passing, which means it is not reporting any failure, then what does it mean? I'm having some silent horror cases. There are some bugs, but uh, I'm not aware. So I will not be able to catch in time, but I will see that in the later stages, maybe in the production environments. Maybe the end users will report them. So it will be a prestige issue for me. So getting rid of these reliability issues is very important in terms of uh, the quality of the test results. But why can I have some uh, reliability issues? There may be lots of different reasons. We call them as test smells. There may be lots of different test smells we may have in our test automation framework. And by doing the root cause analysis, we can understand why we are having these kind of smells. Maybe we are not waiting for the expected results properly. Like if the services that we are testing is microservices and working independently from each other asynchronously, then working for the expected results in the proper way is very important. Like after I perform my request, maybe I will have already 200 response, which says it is successful. But maybe the whole transition is not completed. In the other backend services, the other part of the operation is still being uh, maintained. So after getting 200 response, if I immediately check for the expected result, maybe it will fail. It is not met yet. But what I can do is maybe I can adapt a polling mechanism. If the expected result is not there, maybe poll one more time uh, periodically and uh, until the maximum acceptable time, let's say the timeout is one minute, two minutes, whatever. Uh, after that, I can already fail my test case. But until that time, I can poll and I can check for the expected result a few times. Or if there is any other notification or any other check that I can control to be sure that the whole transaction is completed. After ensuring this is completed, then I can check for the expected results. This is only one example for the asynchronous weights. But similarly, there may be lots of different reasons for test smells. And we may have lots of different test smells like the fragile issues, the dependency issues, or the uh, scope related issues. Like sometimes the test cases are uh, too eager and trying to cover lots of different things. So it will be really difficult to maintain.
So what we can do is to list all the testimonies we are having by analyzing the test results and try to get rid of all the testimonies uh, one by one. And uh, another way to improve the quality is, of course, having strong quality gates. And how we can improve the quality gates? Maybe we can embrace the static code analysis uh, tools. Like one example is a very commonly used one is Sonar Cube. Uh, we can uh, set up the servers and we can define our quality rules. And if there are any violations, then we can notify people to uh, fix those kind of issues. And of course, additionally, we can embrace the peer review activities. Whenever we develop a code, we can share with uh, another uh, colleague in the team and we can uh, get some feedback. So on the uh, other hand, doing from the uh, review, uh, as the review side of uh, the medallion, uh, doing the code reviews is very important because not only checking uh, quickly and setting all, uh, already uh, uh, putting some comments and setting already to done, uh, apart from doing this, doing a comprehensive code analysis and code review is important. Not only the uh, all the needed steps, but also the way that they are done and implemented. If there is any other way that we can implement these steps in a more efficient way, then we, maybe we can provide some feedback and we can again act as a quality coach to improve the uh, not only the functionality, but also the efficiency and the reliability of the test code as well. So one example from my uh, project is the uh, maintenance of the locators. Because after some time, I realized that the UI cases were broken too often because the uh, UI pages were updated uh, frequently and the locators were having some updates like their uh, class names and the class pets were updated or maybe their expats were updated. So what we did is we sit together with the development teams and we made an agreement. Whenever they put a new element or whenever they uh, update some uh, page elements, I asked them to put some unique uh, data test IDs. So in this way, even if the class names or the class pets are changed or updated, since the unique ID is same, then after these updates, my test case would not be broken. And it even uh, apart from the, uh, ro uh, the robustness, the maintenance is also uh, improved because uh, rather than trying to uh, figure out the complex and complicated expats, I would directly put uh, the uh, test data IDs, which is very easy to find uh, in the elements. So after all these improvements that we can do during implementing our test cases, some more things that we can do, some more improvements that we can do is in the execution stage. While we are executing test cases, what we can do, what, how uh, we can uh, further improve the test executions. First of all, the reusability is very important. What I mean by reusability? On this example, I put a real life scenario in which uh, there is two lines of code, which is like, uh, apart from the logs, there are really two lines. The first one is uh, doing some operation, which is finding the element and putting some queries on this uh, text field. And then the uh, next line is just to check for the expected result. That after I put my uh, text value into the text field, then the system should uh, automatically complete into some other values. So these two lines is a very easy test case for me. But what I can do is, by introducing some configurational variables, by separating these environmental variables as configurations, I can execute the very same test case on lots of different configurations. Like I can change the browser on which I'm testing. So in this way, I can do the compatibility testing, or I can change the platform that uh, I'm testing. Like I can test uh, this test case on the uh, browser on desktop version, or mobile version as well. So uh, I have an execution platform uh, variable here. And by introducing this as a configurational parameter, the test case is uh, realizing that the execution platform is set to either desktop or mobile. And in before test blocks, if it is set to desktop, for example, it is adding some more uh, user agent headers or if it is uh, changing the viewport, the uh, window size uh, of the application to be able to set in the mobile uh, platform conditions. And similarly, I can change the stage parameters like I can execute on my QA stage or pro stage 
or even the application itself I can change. For example, the URLs that I'm navigating, I can dynamically uh, generate these URLs by reading these configuration of parameters. So the best practice here is, of course, getting rid of these kind of embedded values. If I already uh, hard code these kind of uh, environmental variables into the code, then I would not be able to execute the same test case on different configurations. But I am separating as much as possible these uh, environment, environmental variables as configurations. And in this way, I can improve the reusability. And of course, I can generate some suites to increase the uh, efficiency. Because after some regression suites, I, I don't have to execute the whole set, right? But uh, I can execute only the relevant test cases or maybe at least only the uh, most prior test cases to ensure that uh, any high priority test case is not broken. Because otherwise, if I want to execute all the test cases after or before every merge, then it will not be feasible. There will be a lot of resources consumed by this kind of test executions, but I can narrow down the test scope by selecting the correct subsets. So what I can do is, Again, maybe in my test automation framework, I can introduce some tags or annotations. And by uh, help, uh, thanks to these kind of annotations, I can select the relevant test cases and I can execute the correct subset, which means the correct uh, test suite after my uh, development activities. And eventually the maintenance, the continuous improvement stage is the last ring in the whole software testing uh, life cycle chain. So what we can improve continuously is, first of all, the uh, robustness. As we discussed, the reliability, the robustness, and uh, the accuracy of the test results is very important. So what we can do is, if we have some public reports, like we can introduce some dashboards, or there are some uh, open tools, like uh, one example, mostly common one is Allure. So if we utilize any of these kind of reporting tools, then we will have chance to analyze the previous executions. And we figure out uh, what test cases were uh, fragile or flaky, like sometimes passing and sometimes failing. And then I can understand the root causes if I'm collecting the evidences. Like if I'm seeing that just that the test case failed, maybe I will not have any clue why it failed. But if inside the execution, I already collect all the evidences, maybe the screenshots, even the uh, maybe the execution video I can collect. Of course, this is a trade-off. The uh, resources consumed and the benefits uh, introduced by these uh, evidence activities. I can decide what kind of evidences I can collect. And eventually, by figuring out the root causes for the flakiness issues, I can reveal them one by one. So this example is, again, from my project. And after uh, we start doing this kind of analysis, we reduce the uh, number of uh, flaky tests. Maybe it is a little bit difficult to read here. But on the same number of executions, there were at least, I guess, seven uh, test cases failing. But after we start fixing those kind of root causes, we get rid of all the flakiness issues and it indirectly improved, uh, contributed in the execution durations. The test uh, is not uh, needed to be retried anymore because it already passed in the first trial. And the execution duration itself is very important. So what we can do to improve the execution durations is if we have a chance, we can uh, separate and split the whole suite into parallel runs like introducing some virtual machines, we can uh, uh, allocate some test cases to uh, some uh, virtual machines and some others to the uh, other uh, virtual machines. In this way, we can start all executions in the same time. And with a parallel run uh, collection, we can complete the whole test executions in a way uh, similar time. And one last thing, uh, last but not least is collecting some uh, metrics and doing some monitoring activities in production to understand what kind of issues the customers on the end users are facing. Like sometimes if the page is not responding or even the response time is having some peaks, then we can try to understand in what time ranges are the response times are having some peaks or maybe after which operations 
the pages are not responsive or maybe sometimes you are returning some 500 error codes or maybe 400 or bad response error codes so we can try to understand lots of different uh, metrics regarding the quality so we can decide which metrics will be representing our goals in the best way and then we can start monitoring these kind of metrics from the production environments to get some insights about different aspects of uh, the quality of our product and our processes as well. So to wrap up, there are lots of different initiatives that we can perform to improve the quality of the product and the processes as well. Because revealing the bugs is very important. In that way, we can fix the bugs that, we, that are found on the product is important and we can fix them. So we can directly improve the quality in our product. But how about avoiding them in the first place? So maybe improving the processes that we are following, like encouraging QA in the early stages, or maybe improving the uh, non-functional tests in addition to the functional tests, like having some chaos testing activities, or improving the coverage issues, trying to embrace some uh, different test design techniques. In all stages, we can improve the quality both in the product itself or the processes that we are following to develop our products. So uh, this was the main idea, like having the holistic team approach and having everyone in the team on the same page with a quality mindset. Uh, in this way, we can achieve our quality goals rather than having individual efforts, just executing the test cases. In this way, uh, we can have and we can achieve our quality goals. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, I will be more than glad to answer them. Thank you, Masood. Thank you for a wonderful session on test automation. Participants, please post your questions, if any, on, uh, on the Q&A chat. And while I think people uh, put in their questions, uh, I had one question about, uh, OK, there is a question. Yeah, so we have a question, Masood, that asks, uh, asks about you know, your uh, experience on any um quality tools like what are the good quality tools that we can use mm -hmm. yeah starting from the uh, management tools like first of all uh, we can use uh, different tools to manage our tasks uh, or the roadmap one very common example is jira we can use this or maybe we can use some uh, other open so source tools and uh, other than this issue tracking uh, system, just for managing the test cases itself, we can use uh, some different test tools. Uh, some examples are like test rail or test link, uh, these kind of uh, tools we can use. Or there are some plugins of Jira, uh, which is called X-Ray that we can use to manage our test cases. In this way, we can increase the visibility of test cases. We can document all the test step definition, test scenarios, and we can share by exporting these into different external platforms. Like we can export into spreadsheets or Excel sheets and we can print them out. And other than that, the static code uh, analysis tools, uh, as I explained in the slides, SonarCube is a good example for this. And other than this, uh, we can uh, use some uh, linters to uh, check the static code uh, quality. And eventually, the uh, regarding the uh, test results, we can utilize the Allure reporting, or otherwise we can use some dashboards. It depends on the tool itself, the framework itself uh, that we are using. But for example, uh, what I'm doing is currently I'm using Cypress as a test automation framework. So Cypress has a, already a dashboard. So uh, on the Cypress dashboard, you can already see the execution durations and the failing test case ratios and the uh, flakiness tracking you can have on this dashboard. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Misud. Um, there is another question which uh, talks about what if you are, you are a Scrum Master and you want to learn test automation, please mm -hmm. uh, advise the best process. So somebody who is working as a Scrum Master mm -hmm. wants to learn the test automation process, what is the best way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I think the biggest responsibilities here is uh, on the test automation engineers themselves, because uh, the only thing that we can do is not only automating the test cases, but sometimes 
letting everyone know about what we are doing. Like we can do some demo sessions or we can do some introductory uh, meetings and we can invite different people to introduce about the activities that we are performing. In this way, people can have an idea about what we are doing, in what ways we are implementing and doing the automation. And again, this is a very important and good question because everyone uh, needs uh, a basic understanding about automation. Maybe everyone uh, doesn't have to do the automation, but at least have a, a basic understanding about automation because test automation is an important part of our quality uh, activities. Uh, without test automation, it would be really difficult by only manual testing. So that's why in most of the teams, we have some automation engineers. So if Scrum Master or the product owner doesn't know anything about test automation, then it will be a little bit difficult to communicate. You cannot communicate in the same language because if you are explaining your tasks, your daily activities, then they will not understand. For example, if you are uh, explaining or sharing the uh, things, the obstacles that you are struggling with, then maybe they will not be able to help. But normally Scrum Master or product owner should support you with the obstacles that you are having. So what we can do is maybe we can do some collaborative studies and we can do uh, pair programming as well. For example, instead of just assigning uh, some tasks, we at first, in the first uh, tasks, we can do together. For example, pair programming, and we can start with the uh, easy tasks and we can assign them and little by little we can introduce them and we can uh, facilitate their adaptation into automation activities. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there's one more small question that maybe mm -hmm. we can take up first. Uh, so yeah. Tanuj is asking for the link of the dashboard that you had suggested. Uh, okay. If... Uh, Tanush, it, if it is possible, maybe I, I will uh, jump into breakout session so uh, I can share the tool that I'm using. Sure, 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 yeah. Would it make Tanush sense? request, yeah, 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 of course it makes okay. sense, I think. Sure. So, Tanush, uh, please, uh, requesting you to please join the Hangouts and Misut can share more uh, information about the dashboard uh, there. There's one more question. It is a little long and I think it is a little technical. Yeah. So I'll, I'll try to summarize. So um, I think the question is about uh, the problem that you had uh, spoken about changing locators more yeah. often yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, from release to release. So, yeah. um, so it becomes a problematic thing that we don't know which locator uh, you know, we are testing and then we are getting an error, unable mm -hmm. to locate an element. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you had suggested some changes to be done by the developers there. Yes. Um, so, so is that, so the question, I, I cannot understand who it has written. It is saying anonymous, but is that understanding correct? And do you have any more suggestions there? Yeah, that is correct. I request uh, from the development team to add some unique IDs. Because uh, normally, uh, originally, they have only some locators. Like, uh, I know only the class path or the class name. But when they uh, change the design of the page, for example, they move a button from the bottom of the page to the top of the page, right? Then the path has already changed. So my test case would be broken. So the first important thing is the close communication channel between development teams and the quality teams. When they do this change, they should let me know, right? But otherwise... Uh, I would not be aware of this change. Whenever they plan such a change, whenever they plan to change the UI page, then they should let me know in the first place. Again, early QA involvement is very important. I can already get some feedback. If you make this change, maybe it will not be very usable for the end users anymore. I can do this feedback. And in the meantime, I will be notified. I will, I will already be aware of this change. So I can already start preparations. I can already start changing the locators in my test automation framework. This is one thing. And the second thing is uh, adding some unique IDs. If you have these unique IDs, even if you change, like you move the button from the uh, bottom to the top, then the unique IDs still will be same. So uh, this change will not uh, have any effect uh, on the test case. These were the two suggestions uh, I made. Sure, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Masood. Uh, there's one more question, I, I think, and then we can probably wrap up. So the question yep. is, uh, can you suggest how we can automate the maintenance issues due to false alerts? 
Oh yeah, again, we have to find out what the root causes, like why we are having some false alarm because the test case is failing, right? But normally everything looks uh, accurate. So why test case is failing? We have to understand the root cause. So sometimes, and mostly it is like a waiting issue. Sometimes we uh, want to see the expected result, but it is not there yet. For example, uh, after I did my query, I expect to see like, let's say three results on the page. But when I check, there are two of them. Because when I check, I find the elements on the page, but it is not updated yet. So if I wait a little bit more, it would be only the three of them. But when I check, it was two. And since I expect three of them, my test case would fail because the actual result and the expected result does not match. So what I can do is before checking, I have to ensure that the operation is completed from the system side system complete everything that it uh, uh, has to done and then uh, it is ready to check after i ensure this if i do my check if it is still two then it would really fail it should really fail but if not if it is three uh, then it would pass so what i can do is uh, first of all list all the root causes like if it is waiting issue or if it is any other reason then uh, I should take the uh, relevant action item and fix uh, my test case. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for your patience to answer all the questions. Sure, and sure thank you for a wonderful session and sharing your experience with us today. Mm -hmm.